Hello. Today is Saturday, November 9th, 2019, and it's about uh, 10.52 a.m. here in Pasadena, California. Um, here is a quick update for uh, the past week or so and, and what we've got going on here. Uh, first in the news, uh, another $100 billion uh, repo operation earlier this week. Again, this is uh, macroeconomic signals to pay attention to. Uh, working on the sportscore.us uh, rollout for this coming December, uh, settling on the three prefixes to address the particular demographics, the groups that we're talking to. Um, invest.sportscore.us would be the place for leagues and teams to go for, um, to express interest and to understand the non-recourse fundraising model that ASM provides. Uh, jobs.sportscore.us is where we put the highlights of the economic model, the social benefits, um, things that speak to government like tax and revenues, that kind of stuff goes on jobs. And then the penciled in current working title for the educational portal will be excel.sportscore.us. So invest.sportscore.us for leagues and teams, jobs.sportscore.us for economic model, taxes, social benefits, and things along that track, and then excel.sportscore.us as the uh, educational portal where we'll host um, classes and curriculum materials, and we will be looking to make these um, official curricula items. Uh, that's the goal. So that's where all this stuff goes, those three points. Points. Um, on the IP side, we uh, pay, paid the fee to the China Patent Office to uh, just one of the fees due in the, in the maintenance of the uh, Chinese patent applications and patents issued. Uh, we filed the secured by blockchain statement of use on Friday. There's uh, two, two trademarks connected to blockchain that we've registered in the very beginning when all the hype was going on like 2017-18. Um, we've continued to pursue those. This is the second one. Uh, we expect this one will be granted as well. So all 24 uh, trademarks that we've applied for, we've successfully uh, been granted 23 and expect that this 24th one secured by black blockchain will also be um, approved. And this was all part of the, uh, if anybody's been tracking this back to the um, about 2008-2009 period when we're talking about open market. This is basically what open market is all about. Blockchain came along and so uh, kind of became the thing, the big thing in that technology and now we use it to, um, you know, for the security system, ASM security system as we envisioned it. Okay, so um, I do not have the audit in hand yet. Um, I, I expect to have a disposition on this next week. So I will let everybody know uh, as soon as I do. Um, when we make statements about things that have happened along the timeline, yes, I understand that a lot of things uh, haven't happened the way we thought, but at all the points in time where I've reported information, it's been the information that I either had firsthand knowledge of or it was passed along to me, um, and I passed it along as I received it. So uh, those are just news reports. Not all those things happen, obviously, for various reasons. They're not under my control. I can't force the outcomes. But what I reported along the way, um, like I said, I've either been direct participant, firsthand knowledge, or uh, was reported to me, and then I reported it to everybody else in the source of where I got that information. So I just want that to be clear. Um, you know, some things happen, some things don't happen. They take different direction. Uh, but there's never has been and never will be any intention to mislead anybody on what's actually happening here. Felt that needed to go on the record here. So that's that. Uh, more of the origin story that you don't know about. Um, so back in the, I would say the most difficult period would be uh, the years 2010 through 2014. Um, in that period of time, holding together, we didn't have the ASM, we didn't have anything, no software, we didn't have any 
um, platform, all we had was the SRI part, which was half, uh, you know, halfway to launch when the economy crashed. So holding all that together for uh, those years, and, and those years were particularly difficult economic times for everybody, um, is really nothing short of a miracle to be able to come back around in, in late 14 uh, and, and begin putting it all back together, about, I guess about mid-14. So, um, you know, how, how did that happen? I mean, c quite literally um, through an unbelievable se sequence of events over that period of time, if you remember, there were foreclosure moratoriums and all kinds of things because the entire economy basically imploded. Um, through a, a series of uh, just perfect timing, I was able to, to stay in my house in Texas. And if you know the, the real estate laws in Texas, it's a uh, deed of trust state. So it's very easy to, uh, to sell your house out of, in foreclosure on the courthouse steps. I was able to stay in that house for three and a half years uh, without any mortgage payments and then ultimately force Bank of America to modify the loan. And then uh, not shortly thereafter, we realized that I was going to have to come here in order to make ASM work uh, after much, uh, much thoughtful prayer and consideration and uh, talking to people and just really not in a big hurry. Uh, to come here. So any idea that I came running over here because uh, this was where I wanted to be instead of in Texas, realizing the costs were going to be higher, I was going to be separated from my kids and all that is just completely wrong. Um, many, many people will t have firsthand knowledge of all the goings on of that period and can testify to that being the case. So no, I didn't come here um, willingly. I came here because it was obvious to me that proximity to ACE and all the rest of the pieces here were what would be necessary. Um, I have no special affinity to here. If I didn't have to be here anymore, uh, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, I've been here four and a half years now. I kind of get the whole idea of what's what this is about. Appreciate it for the strengths and also understand the weaknesses of it, uh, like everything. So that's a part of it you probably don't know. And what, and what that allowed me to do is the very little bit of money that was coming in, um, which really came from, I mean, when you talk about how, how much $1 can matter, uh, you know, there were times when it was literally one person who was holding the entire, I don't think they knew this at the time. They know it now because I think I've told everybody at some point along the way who was that one person that they were. Um, you know, that's the difference between the lights going out. Um, you know, I was able to, but because I had no house payment for three and a half years, that money was pad and maintenance fees. It was food. It was uh, keeping my own basic utilities on. I, I lived in a house empty of just about all the furniture for, um, well, from the from from late 2010 until until I left in 2015, so five years, um, and all I was doing was uh, studying, um, trying to get in better physical condition because I knew this was going to be a struggle. You know, all, all the stuff I knew I was in for a fight. I didn't realize it was going to go on as long as it did. In fact, it's still going on, but um, you know, trying to get reset and and staying there and staying focused and trying you know, put the pieces back together and not let the pieces fall apart, um, like the, the IP packages and all that. So there's a bit more of the story. Uh, regarding bonus margin, I'll state again that bonus margin goes up to 1,000 to 1 in the uh, Forex market. So there's nothing particularly um, unusual about that. And yes, bonus margin is a stimulus. It's what keeps the pilot market alive, which is the, you know, again, two halves or, or one half of the showcase that we need to make to show that we have a workable model. We have the educational market, we have the pilot market. So that's what the margin is doing is acting as a stimulus. Um, I'm still getting complaints uh, almost on a daily basis from people who want to make direct contributions into the pilot market. Uh, that's again, I think a really strong sign for what will happen once we, um, take the limits off and, and do what we need to do. So um, 
you know, what are we hoping for here? Uh, the thing that is in front of us, which is quite literally one month away um, as of today, is uh, New York City. And, you know, of my 18 month roughly engagement with this group, um, this is their biggest and their showcase event. Uh, it's in New York market, so it's going to draw all kinds of people. Um, you know, and I see this as our single greatest opportunity, um, certainly in front of us. I, I don't know if it's forever. Um, it's hard to say, but it's the greatest opportunity in front of us 30 days out to get the word out uh, in, in totality. Uh, and that's what we've got to do to get to the next step. We need to get the word out on the order book. Um, that we're looking for leads, that we're looking for teams and leads that are interested in fundraising through our model. Uh, we need to get that word out. Um, we've never really done that. We need to do that now for sure. And then the, uh, the educational release, the sports core release, and now sports core has become kind of the master branding around what we're doing. Um, new sports economy, not, I mean, that's been there for more than a decade, but I think that's more uh, educational facing and it's not, it's not public facing. I think sports core is, is much better and invest.sportscore, jobs.sportscore, excel.sportscore. So reveal that, um, you know, version one of, of sportscore.us with those three elements. Um, invest is, is going to be the catcher for league interest. And so that's the order book. And then, uh, Excel is, of course, the the blue the blueprinted educational, uh, you know, version one, and then Jobs is the is speak to the government piece. So really, it's uh, Sports Core. The release of the concept of Sports Core is what we're driving to for December. Um, you know, I realize that I've got to be more aggressive in terms of recruiting help. Uh, that we're at that point and that it's absolutely a necessity. So I will be making a much more um, concerted effort and aggressive attempt to to reach out and ask for help actively here because we're going to have the 30-minute presentation and lots of uh, days of, of networking opportunities and all that. And it's, you know, it's, it's basically now or never. We've got to, we've got to uh, get this message in front of the right people at the right moment, and this is that moment. So um, that's where we're at, and that's what we're driving towards. That's where, you know, sustaining all this is what the budget is for. So thanks again for your time, and I will speak with you again next Saturday. Bye now.